Patch 4.0 for Space Marine 2 launched earlier this week to a not-so-hot reception. With the addition of a new difficulty, Lethal, as well as a boss type, there have also been some buffs and nerfs to the aspects of the game, mainly to the way armor and ammo interact with the lower difficulties outside of the new one. The devs spoke to their reasoning behind it, but no matter how you cut things, whether you are for or against the changes, there is something that has happened to Space Marine 2 outside of the patch notes. I've spoken my thoughts on Lethal in my previous coverage and how I think it's a great step for the game. I want there to be a sweaty, try-hard difficulty that rewards players for playing on the hardest difficulty imaginable and having minor cosmetic rewards for that as a further incentive. But it should not come at the cost of making the other difficulties completely unapproachable to everyone else that doesn't have the time or the want to dedicate to the game. In this video, we're going to talk about three big things, and in my usual fashion of upfronting the knowledge of my video, here's the rundown. The AI director for the game is broken. I was challenged to play the game with randoms on substantial and ruthless difficulties, and the results had nothing really to do with player competency, but rather game accessibility. The AI director was throwing absolute hell at us. On a substantial, the first mission I did had a total of six Zonethropes, two Lictors, one Ravener, and one Neurothrope. This is on a difficulty that the game recommends you're at least level 10, and you're probably playing with either Mastercrafted or Artificer gear, assuming it's your first go-around. That's a disgusting amount to throw at what is now supposed to be the middle ground of difficulties. If this was on lethal, sure, whatever, my cop doth spilleth over with extremists. We'll go into more of my findings from the community as well as my other matches charted on a graph later in the video, but another big issue is connecting to the game. Right now, you'll often connect to a host, and you'll sit at a screen for a handful of minutes at a time. And this isn't always the case, but it absolutely is present enough that it's no noticeable and frustrating, especially with how much it can slow down your game time. Even further, if someone were to leave your game, it can bug the game. So now you can't join other people and people can't join you. So you have to leave the screen, reboot the game, all of these things. Lastly, the game has been crashing for a number of people after missions or at random points, resulting in you know loss of progress or just the added annoyance of having Having to boot up a, uh, a decently graphic intensive game that again sets you back some time. I'll expand on each of these topics in the respective sections, which you can jump to or navigate using the chapters below. Saber has addressed the feedback from players saying a balance patch is coming this week. And while I think that the balance patch is all fine and dandy, I think the bigger issues of the AI director is bugged. So the lesser ammo, the reduced armor, that isn't really being factored in because you don't even have a chance to survive to access the reduced ammo crates and the lesser armor won't matter because you're just jammed up. Like I said, if this was on lethal, I get it, get good. But this is the portion of the game where people are supposed to be getting good, and it's creating an artificial barrier that's stopping players in their tracks. But that's the too long didn't watch this entire video. You can jump ahead using the chapters as mentioned earlier, but if that's all you wanted to know, please feel free to shut the video down. If you are heading out and you found this video helpful, please don't forget to like, comment, or subscribe, as each one of those things is a huge, or has a huge impact for me. Lastly, I stream this game as well as plenty of others on Twitch every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, so click the link in my description and swing on by. Well, Let's get started though on the real issue with patch 4.0 in Space Marine 2. To start us off, let's talk about the AI director. And I'm I'm sorry, I'm not really like techno savvy. Techno savvy is on a term, but tech savvy enough to like put this in a really cool presentational format. So I have it in a uh, Excel spreadsheet, that thing that I think we all love to look at. And what you can see here are a total of 21 missions. So seven missions on substantial and 14 missions on ruthless that myself and my community did. Um, I Said the, said the word out to my Discord, said, hey, report what difficulty you did, what terminus enemies, and then what extremist enemies you encountered. So we know that we've got, outside of lethal, we have minimal, average, substantial, and ruthless difficulties, right? So we've got the four difficulties. And substantial was always kind of supposed to be something that didn't have a guarantee of a terminus. It was there, it, it could happen, but it was like, more on the 50-50 spectrum, and Ruthless was supposed to have a far more likely chance to get you a Terminus spawn. So across seven missions in Substantial, and I made a Reddit post to a, a kind of piggybacking onto this on someone else's post, and a bunch of people responded to me with very similar findings on average in Substantial, not even a Ruthless factor in. But across seven missions, six Terminus spawned five Carnifex, and one Neurothrope. That's an 85% chance of a Terminus spawning on Substantial. Again, if this was lethal, sure, jam those Terminus up my ass. I'll deal with it. I'll figure it out. It's the hardest difficulty I'm supposed to do that, right? 
but not on substantial. That just doesn't make any sense. And furthermore, too, I feel like these two percentages are really weird. So we did 14 ruthless runs and seven total um, terminus across all 14 of those runs, and it's a 50% chance. I, I think that should be swapped, right? And of course, it's really hard to get a real good, accurate representation of what percentages are actually like, because we're taking a look at data set numbers, and we know that these aren't um, there's two, there's so many factors, right? Uh, okay. This will spawn based off the AI director saying you're taking too long or you're going too fast. It throttles, right? It kind of tries to show, th throw things at you in a certain way, shape or form. And I also understand that looking at total numbers for a mission like this is it's going to skew numbers. So I understand those things, but I'm trying to show a representation of how this is kind of really blowing things out of proportion. And this is only the terminus spawns, the terminus spawns on substantial feel way out of whack compared to ruthless on ruthless they don't feel wild but what does feel wild are the number of zone throws that spawn so let's push this over to the to the right and we can see the number of extremists on both ruthless that's the first one here uh, i'm sorry ruthless at the bottom and uh substantial at the top so it's a 57 percent chance that if a extremist spawns it is a zone throwp. that's pretty disgusting that's really because the, the zone tropes are really tricky to deal with. They're really tricky to deal with and to be jammed up with so many zone tropes. Like I was saying in that one we did was six zone tropes and a substantial is really rough and tumble. Could be a pair, could be a singular one. And that makes it for an average of 13.6. You know, I, let's just say 14. And again, like I've said before, these numbers, when you look at them in a whole, uh, as, as a whole, rather than just, Hey, each individual run was like this, it does skew things. So I am very keen to that right now. But I'm just trying to present what this looks like on a, a wider spectrum. I don't even know what that sentence means. But zone tropes spawning in Ruthless is disproportionately high compared to Lictors and Raveners. I'm not saying, saying that that number should also be 24 or 25, but it seems like if you have an extremist spawn, it's a 50% chance that it's a zone trope. I guess factoring the fact that oftentimes they spawn in pairs. So maybe that skews things and it's supposed to be that kind of number. But a lot of the results from the um, community were that they would get a pair and a single or a single and a pair or two pairs or two pairs and a single. Like it wasn't very consistent with the zone throp spawns. And what I'm saying here is that zone tropes seem to be vastly overrepresented in both substantial and in ruthless. It's fine but they're just so goddamn punishing right the way that you have to deal with that beam you have to dodge it at the last second and that can really result in you really the, the hitbox on it doesn't match the visual telegraph of it so you have to learn to dodge it right at that very last second or you're going to get hit by it it's going to stun you and then the second wave kills you it's very frustrating so the extremist average then is at 22.6 let's just say 23 on uh ruthless and I, you know honestly i these two numbers they don't really feel very accurate to me. I'm basically taking the total average of all the uh, um, the extremist bonds. It feels a little conflated, so please factor that in. And if I put this on a table, uh, if I put this on a table, you can see ruthless and zonthropes are the highest ones of everything. Right? They are just so disproportionately again represented across all of the spawns of specials in this game either extremists or terminus and i think that in an ai director sense we're just getting so many of these and it is really dunking on people that are just coming into the game they've got a level nine and they're trying to jump into substantial they've got a level 15 they're trying to level up most people have told me i'm not going to play ruthless anymore because I'm getting jammed up so hard with zone tropes, I'm jumping down to substantial and I'm struggling to beat substantial because of still the amount of zone tropes and neurothropes or whatever spawns that I'm still dealing with at that level. That is just really not fair. Again, I'll say it for the millionth time. If it's on lethal, I get it, but not here on the difficulties where I'm supposed to build a platform that I can access and actually challenge myself and go into lethal. If this were what I've what I've also looked at too with lethal. It's fine to me that lethal is so difficult because it doesn't require it. There's no progression, right? Um, it doesn't gatekeep progression for you. If you can't beat lethal, there's nothing wrong. You've gotten everything in the game, right? You've gotten all the relics. You've gotten everything else. You're just missing out on the lethal operation specific knee badges, the helmet and the power sword skin. That's it. So at least there's no actual player power locked behind lethal. But with ruthless now, people can't even get their relic spawns to even 
reliably do ruthless, let alone reliably do lethal with how the AI director is chopping up and just drowning people with zone throw-ups right now. The AI director being the most egregious of issues with the patch when it comes to connectivity, this is nothing new, but it's definitely something that you're going to experience if you're not playing with a set group of friends, a discord where you're pretty much creating pre-mades is there's an issue when it comes to uh, uh, joining random groups. And this can be in the form of simply doing a quick match for whatever um, operation you want to do. Like, hey, you know what? I'm going to queue up as a sniper. I'm going to do Inferno. I'm going to do it on substantial difficulty. And when you jump into the game, there's no guarantee that you're going to be able to play a sniper. So that that's, you know, strike number one. That's been there since the beginning of the game. So I can't attribute that, obviously, to this patch. Another issue is that when you join up with someone, there's this just lag it just it sets you on the the black screen in the lower right corner it says loading whatever and it goes through and it stays there and in the pursuit of science i just sit, simply let the game take for as long as it needed to do and it took like three and a half four minutes i don't know anyone who's going to want to wait through that for three and a half four minutes they're just going to no screw this i'm backing out after like 45 seconds a minute right because we're in a time of solid state drives and and uh, satellite internet so <laughs> we don't, we're not we're not going to attribute to that that's not the it's not me that's the problem it's the game and it really i think there's some issue here with the peer-to-peer -peer connection in operations because operations do work on a peer-to-peer -peer basis so connecting to people is a pain in the ass and again that has always been a problem but i think it's become even more of one especially in the most recent patch and furthermore too if you were to join into someone's game, you go through the game with them and neither of you cry or no one crashes, no one gets booted, you complete the match, you go back to the hangar and some, and the host leaves. This will usually transfer the host to you or the other person, unless they were in a party and they both left together. Oftentimes this can bug your game. And the result is you have to go back to the title screen because in that, in that situation, you can sit there and try to join another match and it won't let you join. You'll just sit there in queue waiting infinitely until you just say, screw it. I'm just going to go play a game with bots. And then you're going to get drowned by 5,000 zone throw ups. And you're going to wonder why there's tentacle porn all over the place. But still my point remains. Um, <laughs> what was I going with that? Um, if, People, if you can't join them, you're going to go, okay, well, that's screwy. Maybe I'll invite a friend. Then they can't join you. It'll just hang. They're, they just It'll say that they're trying to join your game. Uh, the little hourglass will go. And this happens even when I'm playing with my pre-mates with friends. Sometimes it just bugs us. So the only fix is to quit to the title screen and then go back into the game. That's really frustrating because there's loading screens for loading screens in this game. And that really kind of hinders the player experience, especially because it adds time on to the game. And I'm going to go, I'm, I'm going to, I've talked about that a lot. I'm going to bring it up towards the end here, but the other, the other workaround for this is to completely reboot the game. Again, adding time. I'm on a PC. It's way easier for me to do that. It's tedious to do it on a console. And I don't even know if it fixes it on a console because I don't play on console. So I think that that is the biggest problem when uh, it comes to connecting is that it creates so many additional issues with connecting. If it was just, oh, I didn't connect or reconnect, that's just tedious and annoying. But the fact that it's breaking your game, you're making, you're, it's making it so that you have to wait in these super long screens to hopefully get through, to hopefully not have your game get broken, all these overlying issues that then cause this, um, again, barrier from people being able to join and have fun. If you are looking for people to play with and you just, you just cannot find anyone, you can feel free to join my Discord. I have a whole operation section where people jump into voice chat and play all the time. So you can feel free to do that. It's in the uh, description below. So you can join in. People just share their invite code and they they jump into duos or trios all the time. You can find that below. But the last point is not, it's kind of about game connectivity, but also not. And that has to do with the rampant increase in crashing. So Right now, one of the biggest things I've heard when it comes to the game is that people are crashing in the middle of their game, which again, sucks. So that's a loss of progress. Hopefully you can just jump back in. Then it's no big deal, right? If you're playing with friends, if you're playing with randos, you just lost that match. You, you can't jump back into it. But another thing that's happening is that it's crashing at the end of games for a good chunk of people, which again, really sucks. This adds on a bunch of playtime. So since I brought that point up so much, playtime, 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 when you take a look at a lot of the data sets and a lot of the stuff that we talked about here today, um, even even looking at that, uh, the results of what I was talking about earlier, right? Uh, I had 21 missions. So I think on average, 
if you're joining up with randos or, you're, or even if you're playing with friends, you're looking at about a 25 plus minute mission. If you're playing with randos, it's probably 30, 35 minutes, assuming it's not just like a slog uphill that's going to jump into a 40 minute bracket. That's a long time. That's a long time to sit and play through a game. And even moreover, you look at 21, 21 missions. If we're talking about a 30 minute average, that's about what, like 10 and a half hours of total uh, data set. So that's what I mean is when you have these little annoyances and you don't have enough time and a lot of time to play in the game uh, in, a, in a given day, like, okay, maybe you're a full-time employee. Uh, you've got a wife, you've got kids. You just have any number of obligations. Personally, I do YouTube, right? But I'm also a coach and I compete in Olympic weightlifting. I have a high energy dog. I am really honestly playing video games for two, three, four hours a day, depending on what I'm doing. Even though this is my whole entire job, the 200 plus hours I have in Space Marine 2, a lot of it is spent trying to kind of crash course through things. So losing five, 10 minutes to connectivity is really a big pain in the ass, knowing that basically five or 10 minutes can be about a third of a mission if you really think about it that way. And I think that's one of the biggest hangups that this patch is creating. It's created so many little tiny barriers for people that they've now added up. We can say all we want about the patch changes, the patch notes, uh, all those things. But these things are outside of what's in the patch notes. They didn't put in the patch notes, hey, we've rampantly increased, <laughs> we've, we've rampantly decreased uh, uh, game reliability or uh, stability. Good, lo looking forward to those good crashes, you know? So hopefully, hopefully this balance patch, patch fixes things. But what's interesting to me is that we're getting a balance patch. And I don't know what you're going to balance outside of a game of an AI director that is just clearly broken right now. Like that doesn't feel like a balancing to me. That feels like a bug thing to me. And even when we talk about stuff like the lethals, uh, coherency and stuff like that, it feels more bugged than it does balanced, which I think you can't balance something if it's already in a bugged state, if that makes sense. So what I'd really like to see going forward from Saber is not a whole huge beta patch rollout system because that can be pretty strenuous, right? I don't know the size of the development team of Saber. And I know they're recently acquired and all sorts of bullshit, but I'd love it if this, if the patches going forward had like a day or two beta period where if you wanted, you could jump into the patch, you could discover the things that were wrong before these massive rollouts that cause a lot of issues, right? Like you have a bunch of connectivity issues. You have an AI director issue, a ton of stuff that is essentially QA that bars people from even experiencing or giving you critical feedback on the actual patch because they can't even fucking play the patch. So that I think to me is one of the biggest things that is outside of even the three things that we've talked about here today is that the QA for this patch has resulted in so many other things getting broken that it, I don't think people have a true understanding of what the patch is. I mean, I don't. I, I've spent so much of my time trying to kill the things that have been in the game all along, but there's just so goddamn many of them now that I can't even do. I couldn't even test how much stuff gets pulled out of ammo crates on all these random missions because every time I do it, I'm, I'm, I'm just, this, there's just there's too much of a swarm here. I got to go. I'm going to get the other two people who don't know what I'm doing killed because I'm trying to shoot my gun a bunch of times to test how much I can pull out of the ammo crate. All I can tell you from that is it's percentage based. It seems to be that like how much your total percentage of ammo you've used across the whole entire weapon is how much you pull out of the crate. If that makes sense, it's not like a per usage. Like uh, there's three people in a mission, three people can get access to the crate three times or whatever, or uh, they can use the crate three times. It's not like that. It's like some percentage pulls out a, a number of uh, ammo cans from the crate, whatever it is. But that's how I'm feeling about the patch. Again, initially coming into it, I love lethal. I think it's really cool. Coherency definitely needs a lot of work and a lot of help. I think it could be cool once it, which it, once it fixes some stuff up. And I think it needs a number of its bugs fixed. Moreover, talking about how it does give armor back to people that are playing solo, playing last man standing or like assault and they can't get their armor back because they're out of coherency when they had a fucking perk for it. Stuff like that. Those things need to be fixed. But outside of all of it, the AI director won't allow us to really experience everything else. And that is what the big holdup for me with patch 4.0 is. So let me know in the comment section below, have you been experiencing the same thing? I, from what I've experienced and read on Reddit, what I've read on the previous videos comment section, this seems to be the biggest thing. I mean, I didn't bring up the propensity and the rampant increase of, I've said rampant like 40 times in this music, in this, in this video, not music video, um, increase in spore mines, which I don't even know how to calculate that. I don't even know how to like, 
Hey, write down how many times the screen blinked red for you. You know, like I, I got no, I got nothing there. I just know there's way more spore mines than before. I was experiencing it for the first time in a bunch of lethal matches, and I thought that was a lethal thing. Then I went to substantial and was getting drowned by them. Same thing with the barb strangler. The barb strangler, there's so many barbs on my fucking screen, I can only see green, and that is rough and tumble in a lower difficulty. Like I've said so many times, throw it at me in lethal. Don't do that to me in substantial. So go ahead and let me know in the comment section below how you're feeling, uh, what things could be changed. Uh, there's a number of stuff too that, that we could talk about, like sound cues and so on and so forth. But I think the big things that stand out are what I've covered here today. And go ahead and share your thoughts. But as always, guys, thank you so much for watching here today. Have a good one and take care.